You may already know that Richard Blyer is MLB's weirdest pitcher, but what you may not know is that as of this past Tuesday, Blyer is also in possession of MLB history. He entered the game in the eighth inning, quickly retiring Brandon Nimmo and Francisco Lindor. After giving up a two-out single to Jeff McNeil, though, he found himself facing slugger Pete Alonso. In their short history, Pete had had the upper hand over Richard, reaching base in three out of four plate appearances. McNeil would eventually come around to score by the end of Alonso's at-bat. This time around, though, the polar bear would have nothing to do with it. In 302 big league appearances before this game, no umpire had ever called a balk on Richard Blyer. On this September night, first base ump John Tumpain was going to make himself the first. As the lefty delivered his pitch, a cutter meant for the outside edge, Tumpain called the ball dead. Blyer turned towards the sound of the official's voice, as if in disbelief. Tumpain motioned McNeil to second base, while Blyer pled his case. Had this call not been made, it's pretty likely that no one would have raised a fuss. But Tumpain wasn't about to let Blyer's failure to follow Rule 602A13 slide. A couple pitches later, Blyer, in what can only be interpreted as utter disregard for the sanctity of baseball's very spirit, failed to come to a complete stop once again, igniting Tumpain's wrath for a second time. Blyer actually approached the umpire this time, forcing manager Don Mattingly to intervene. The lefty calmed down enough to return to the mound and was able to work the count to 3-1. and one. Then, on the 17th pitch of the inning, everything went south. Blyer sent a slider along the bottom edge of the zone. He thought it was a strike, and the home plate ump agreed. Alonso, on the other hand, started toward first, but was also stopped in his tracks by Tom Payne, who once again would have the final word. He called the third balk of the at-bat on Blyer, scoring McNeil. Mattingly came rushing out of the dugout, getting himself ejected as his pitcher stomped around the mound. Alonso would ground out on the next pitch to end the inning, and Blyer would get himself tossed on his way back to the clubhouse, a fitting end after such an outing. Richard Blyer left the game with a lead, and a piece of history, becoming the only player in modern history to be called for a balk three times in one at bat. After the game, he was asked to comment on his dubious accomplishment, but he had nothing. As is the case most of the time when a balk is called these days, Blyer and Tumpain's back and forth became the source of much debate between baseball fans. Some raised questions about the purpose of the rule. Others called for its removal. Still others called out in desperation, begging for somebody, anybody, to explain to them what the balk rule actually is. Now, were these calls a matter of an umpire making themselves bigger than the game? Or is this simply a case of a pitcher failing to comply with the rules of the sport? I'll let you decide on that one in the comments. What can't be argued, though, is that in their collaboration, Blyer and Tumpain had accomplished something that hadn't been done in over three decades. This was the first time since Jim Gott in 1988 that a pitcher had been called for a balk three times in a single inning. Unlike Blyer's outing, however, Gott's barely made a blip on the MLB radar, because in 1988, his three-balk game was just one of 22 across all of Major League Baseball. See, 1988 is an anomaly in baseball history. For one single year, balks skyrocketed in a way that no other stat ever has. Compared to 88's double-digit total, no other MLB season has seen more than four three-balk games. Nobody in baseball had ever witnessed anything like it, and I don't think we'll ever see it happen again. It was, to put it plainly, the year of the balk. But before we get to that, I've got to tell you about Upside. Whether it's cringing at the pump or getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts. And that's exactly why I started using Upside. If you're the type of person who likes to dine out, get gas, or, I don't know, buy groceries, Upside is the perfect service for you. All you need to do to get cash back at all these places is download the free app. Once you've done that, you can use my code HISTORIAN and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of 10 bucks or more. Using the app is super simple too. Just check in at a business, pay like usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid. On a personal note, I've used Upside at some of my favorite restaurants, and it saved me a lot of money on groceries. You can cash out anytime, which is one of my favorite parts, so the money from Upside can be used from my bank account, PayPal, or even as an e-gift card for Amazon or other brands. Download the free Upside app and use the code HISTORIAN to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's cash in your pocket as soon as today. This story begins in the 1987 World Series. 
Throughout the fall classic between the Twins and the Cardinals, St. Louis manager Whitey Herzog complained that Minnesota starter Burt Blylevin had committed up to 19 uncalled balks. His fury was palpable, but it did little to stop the Twins from winning in seven games. What it did do, though, was get the attention of NL President A. Bartlett Giamatti. While Blylevin had escaped the 87 postseason unscathed, the MLB rulebook wasn't so lucky. During the following offseason, one particular clause in the official rules came under scrutiny. Rule 802B stated that the pitcher, following his stretch, must A. hold the ball in both hands in front of his body, and B. come to a complete stop. It was that last part that got the most attention, as those in and behind the game debated what qualified as a quote, complete stop. MLB's solution was to rewrite the rule altogether, now requiring the pitcher to come to a single, complete, and discernible stop, with both feet on the ground. The idea behind this change was to remove any of the uncertainty that had dogged Herzog and the World Series umpiring crew that fall. By better defining the rule, they thought, they could make ball calls more uniform. In practice, however, changing this one line in the rulebook led to a tsunami of free bases. And it didn't take long, either. On April 13th, Oakland reliever Rick Honeycutt tied the American League record for balks in a game, with four over four innings against Seattle. In doing so, he became the second pitcher in just two days to balk four times, joining Rangers righty Bobby Witt on the shortlist. It was only a few weeks into the season, but Honeycutt's performance on this day served as foreshadowing for what was to come. A starter Dave Stewart had been called for a balk on opening day, then for three more in his second start. Not to be outdone, his teammate Bob Welch was called for three of his own the very next day. Games were decided on balk calls. Angels pitching coach Marcel Lashman complained about the, quote, little white-haired in the National League, who was responsible for the change. Yankees manager Billy Martin said that he was going to tell his players to pause for five minutes before every pitch. Tony La Russa was the skipper of the AL record's 76 balk Oakland A's, and how he was able to make it through this campaign without suffering a stress-induced aneurysm, I have no idea. It wasn't until May 26th, over a quarter of the way through the season, that baseball would see a day go by without a balk. By that point, 416 of the first 544 games of the season had featured the call. Of the 13 individual seasons where a pitcher has balked at least 10 times, 11 of them took place in 1988. Among these was Dave Stewart, whose 16 balks obliterated Steve Carlton's previous single season record of 11. It had taken Carlton a whole year to accumulate that total. Stewart got there in May. By the end of the 1988 season, an MLB record 924 balks had been called. If you look at the record for most balks in a season by a team, the first 18 spots are taken up by clubs that played in 1988. Before 88, the AL record for balks by a team was 26. By season's end, only one club had finished with fewer than that amount. The 1988 rule change had been a fun little experiment, but just as quickly as the year of the balk had begun, the powers that be decided to bring it to a merciful end. The balk rule was changed back to its previous version before the 1989 season, and things got back to normal. Well, as normal as baseball can be. A balk is a two-person dance. Because, much like cheating on your homework, stealing signs, or drunk driving, it's only breaking the rules if you get caught. For legal reasons, I have to say that last part was a joke. As Richard Blyer pointed out in his post-game interview after Tuesday's game, the move that had so offended John Tumpane was the same one he had been doing for his whole career. Let's just check the tape and... Yep, that's true. But the thing was, in this inning, Tumpane had decided he'd had enough of this. And so began the pair's tango of stubbornness and hard assery, in which they managed to turn an otherwise unexceptional at bat into the sight of maybe the dumbest box score of the year. And boy, was it dumb. And that, the dumbness of it, is really at the core of it all. The balk is one of those things about baseball that sets it apart from other sports. It's a vague, esoteric rule, but at the same time, I can't seem to bring myself to call for its removal. See, a balk is kind of like a glitch in an old video game. Nobody who's around anymore is really sure why it's there. It doesn't provide much tangible benefit in most circumstances. But as annoying as it may be to some, I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a little rush of excitement every time I see one happen. And while a rate like the one pitchers suffered from in 1988 isn't good for anyone, the balk is a rare enough occurrence in today's game that it remains more of an oddity than anything else. So sorry to Richard Blyer, 
but it looks like the box here to stay.